What is going on everybody? Back on a knife review. So today on the tabletop, I've got the uh, Boker Plus Quaken. This is a Lucas Burnley design. And uh, right off the bat, I have to say that uh, the experience of this knife was kind of mixed for me, personally. Um, the, the one thing about this knife I really like is that it ticked a lot of boxes for me. Uh, so for example, it has carbon fiber scales on it, which I love carbon fiber. It has a nice satin finished blade, and uh, you know, I like shiny things, so it's a flipper, it's got IKBS, it's a nice streamlined package, and uh, it's a Japanese inspired design. These are all really positive things for me. I love all these features. But, you know, toward the end here, I'm going to be going into my experience with this knife, and uh, that, that's when I'll uh, give you guys my, my take and, and uh, you know, in practice, how this knife handled. So, you know, since there's so many videos detailing this knife already, I'm not, not, not going to get too, I'm not going to take too much time going into it, but let's just go over the basics. We got uh, a 3.4, almost 3.5 inch blade, satin finish, of course, carbon fiber scales, it's a liner lock, uh, stainless steel liners, and a spring clip. And of course, IKBS. So let's uh, let's take a look at the blade first, since we got the the knife open. Now, the the, the blade on this uh, has been slightly modified by me, not in terms of of, of, of like the way I grounded it, but um, is uh, I took the um, it was it was it was a satin finish, but it you know I took uh, uh, some sandpaper and I sanded it down even more, which uh, gave it a nice uh, mirror polish on there. Now this knife cut really, really well when it first came out of the box, and it still continually uh, cuts well. You know, it's only limited by my my sharpening skills, which is pretty much non-existent, but it's still very sharp. And uh, it, the VG10 steel holds up really, really well. Um, not as well, of course, obviously like S30V or S35VN and all that, but at least the sharpening doesn't take a lot of uh, a lot of time to bring that edge back. But I love this uh, point here. It is extremely sharp, and it has helped me uh, quite a bit in terms of when I'm breaking down cardboard boxes, and you know, uh, occasionally when I have to slice food with it and all that. Then there's the flipper tab. Flipper tab is uh, decently uh, uh, jimped. I mean, there's not not a lot of traction here, and when I go into the deployment part of it, I'll tell you why. But uh, it's very interesting. It kind of breaks up the overall uh, uh, kind of straight design because the first version of this had a thumb disc on it, which made it really nice and streamlined. Um, but uh, this one just has a little, little bit of protrusion here just so you can actually uh, get to the flipper itself. Um, no big deal. And then you got the smooth carbon fiber handle scales. A um, little bit... Uh, there's like there's literally no grip on this thing unless you, unless your hands are sweaty other than that <laughs> It is a very very smooth knife And you got a backspacer or a little tiny backspacer that is and of course a spring clip. So That's basically it uh, this knife in a nutshell. Oh, and you got a nice lanyard hold um, Not very large enough to, to put um, 550 although if you gutted 550 it probably fit through there just fine uh, Otherwise the construction of the knife is very basic, but it's a very beautiful gentleman style folder in my opinion and it is uh, meant to be that way okay so let's go into my experience with the knife so the very first thing i'm going to talk about is the pocket clip now the pocket clip there's nothing wrong with it by the way uh, it's very nice uh, nice and springy you know and it is it is decently um uh, uh, the retention is very decent the problem is is if you can see there's a nice a tiny little space between the scale and the pocket clip now it came this way um so i, I decided not to bend it uh you know to make it tighter but this is the way the knife came and on one occasion and it never happened again after this i was reaching in for my keys and then the knife dropped out of my pocket now that kind of scared me a little bit because i don't want to lose this knife all right so uh uh and that and combined with the nice smooth scales it didn't really serve very very well to hold the knife in my pocket so from that point on i moved it to a different pocket where i don't you know keep that many things in and you know, it was fine, but just something to be aware of. I don't know if this is uh, consistent within the entire, you know, range and production of the, the this knife, but mine came just like that. So after this video, I'm probably just going to bend this down and make it a lot tighter. Uh, a lot of space here. So since your pocket comes up to about here and you got a lot of space to grab and uh, pull, pull a knife out for use. So that's that's really nice. You got a nice, uh, nicely centered blade here. Now the deployment is was another problem that I noticed it. While this is smooth, and it is very fast, but it's it's nowhere as smooth as what I expected from an IKBS flipper. 
very interesting uh, kind of feel to it, where it's almost like hydraulic, you know? It's, it's like, look, you can see that the blade doesn't exactly fall underneath the weight of the, uh, or, or, or under its own weight. So, I mean, you have to really, really shake it closed. Now, the second thing I noticed is the deployment. If you're not careful with this knife, you're actually gonna hit your own finger with it. And here's an example, see if I can recreate it. Oops, I guess I can't. <sighs> Try it again. All right, so, that was, so you notice how my finger was right here. So what has happened is uh, when you go to flip it, if you don't pull your finger all the way back a little bit, what's gonna happen is you push down on the flipper tab, your finger stops here and the blade comes up. And I'll bring it a little closer here. The blade comes up and you see how the, the blade tang hits my finger? That has happened to me several, several times. I just go like, the, oh geez, now I can't recreate it. You pull down and see that? You see how it, how it stops there? So that is one thing, another thing I had to get used to is not allowing my fingers to, you know, get in the way of the deployment. So when you pull back, you have to pull all the way back. See how far my finger had to get? Because look how far the tang um, goes back right there. So if you're up here somewhere and you push down on it, it's going to stop right on your finger. So that's the other thing I had to get used to. Lockup is very solid. It's about 50% right now. There's no blade play. Although I can really, if you really muscle, you'll get a little blade blade. But you know, under normal use, it's very acceptable to me for the price point uh, of this knife. I mean, overall, the construction is just really done well. I mean, it's a really nice knife. Um, so again, back to the blade. I did uh, polish it with some uh, um, sandpaper. Um, I went from, let's see, I think I went from 600 all the way to 2,000, and and. While it was a very good slicer to begin with because of the uh, high hollow ground, uh, it's even better now because the blade is completely smooth now. And uh, this thing just glides through as if it was like, you know, everything was butter. So it's just really cool. Now, in terms of use, all right, so this is where I had a little bit of mixed feelings. Now, ergonomic wise, you know, it'd be anything you expect from a straight handle knife, you know, obviously it's not going to be as comfortable or as easy to hold as something that was more rounded and had more um, organic shapes to it. But other than that, it's very, very good. The other thing is this flipper um, um, tab here does, does very, very little to stop your fingers from slipping. <laughs> Um, several times in cutting cardboard, my fingers slipped up on it and I, and I had to readjust my grip and, uh, you know, there's no jipping on the back too. So now I understand this is supposed to be a gentleman's folder, but I, I did put it through a somewhat hard use and, you know, it, it's really nice. And I'm sure the, the G10 version of this, uh, provides a little, a little bit more grip, but as far as I can tell, this, uh, carbon fiber is just way too slippery. My hand... Uh, started slipping from the car, uh, slipping when I was slicing, you know, I was like doing like a, a really harsh uh, push cuts and it just, it just started doing this little deal right there. And then so I adjusted the angle where, where I went down, pointed the knife down, tried to push and then my fingers started slipping up on the, on the uh, flipper tab. So I don't know, you know, after a little bit of slicing, especially for example, if you're slicing a lot of cardboard, eventually your hands are going to get tired from trying to grip the knife, knife so tightly, you know, because that, when you first start, you're really, really good at it. You know, you're just slicing through whatever. But once, you're, once you, once you uh, repeatedly hold on to the handle uh, for a long, long time and you're gripping down, your, hands will, your fingers will start getting tired. So your grip will loosen a little bit. And that's just natural, you know. And uh, again, the carbon fiber does not help at all with that. Now, if you were to just use this for food prepping or something like that, sure, I can see how that would not be a problem. But I'm trying to use this, you know, in multiple applications. So, um, aside from all that, the, the knife uh, performed very admirably. It still uh, maintained a very sharp edge. It was easy to touch up. Um, again, limited by my own by my own sharpening skills, which isn't that great. But I was able to use a Spyderco Sharp Maker and bring this back to uh, uh, near out of the box sharpness uh, every single time. So, and you didn't even have to work that hard about it. Um, but I guess in closing, uh, I would really recommend this knife, especially if you want something that's kind of, you know, low key, gentleman like, and it doesn't really necessarily scare people when you bring it out. Although the deployment probably would, because most people don't like knives that you know are very quick to deploy like this um the action is not very smooth um see that uh but the uh, deployment is very quick as long as you do it correctly and you don't let your fingers get stuck on the back of the um uh, tang here uh other than that uh i'm think i'm thinking the smaller version the one that's only i believe only three inches um that would probably be more appropriate for a gentleman carry uh something small discreet and is really sharp. I mean, it's like a pocket scalpel once you get this thing back up to its uh, original sharpness. Um, 
it's a very beautiful knife. And, and again, I, I just have this real love for for streamlined Japanese inspired designs. And I think Lucas Burnley really hit it out of the ballpark with this. But of course, I will never be able to afford a Lucas Burnley. <laughs> uh, and um, so this is gonna be as close as I get. And again, it's, just, it's still a very beautiful knife and highly functional. Small little uh, nitpicky things just from my own personal experience, but otherwise I would highly recommend it. And of course, multitude of uh, uh, YouTube videos detailing this knife can be found. And uh, there's like no end to the amount of reviews on the on the Quake in here. And uh, the other thing is uh, there's also multiple versions of this as well. So, you know, there's a tactical version of Blacked Out Blade. There's also the Blade HQ, Blade HQ exclusive where this actually bolstered, which is absolutely beautiful. But unfortunately, I didn't get my hands on one in time, but I, I will settle for this carbon fiber one. It's still beautiful and uh, I enjoy carrying it a lot. So, and this will definitely be still rotated into my EDC as uh, frequently as I can, but I'm testing out other knives right now. So uh, look forward to more reviews from me. I know I've slowed down a lot over the years, but I'm trying to work myself back up again now that I have a little more time. All right, well, if there's any questions or comments, please leave it below. Aside from that, take care, have a nice day, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.